If someone told you he needed you to bring him the whisker from a wild tiger in order to make a special magic potion, how do you think you would do that? How could you even get close to a wild tiger without getting hurt? It seems like an impossible task, doesn't it? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's tale is about a young woman who is given this precise task to bring the whisker of a wild tiger to a wise hermit whose help she's seeking. It's a folk tale from a country called Korea. Let's take a journey with The Tiger's Whisker. Long ago there lived a young boy whose mother had died. The boy's father was a rice farmer who worked in the fields all day long, day after day. He knew how much his son missed his mother, and so he set out to find a new mother for his son as soon as possible. He went to the nearby village and he found a young woman who was happy to be his wife and a mother for his son. But when the farmer brought his new wife home, his son would not even look at her. I don't want a new mother, he cried. I want only my own true mother who is dead. No one can take her place. The new wife tried to win the boy over. She cooked the tastiest of foods and delicious delicacies, but the boy would not eat. She tried to tell him stories and sing him songs, but he would not listen. She even tried sewing him some fine new shirts, but the boy would not even try them on. As time went by, her husband grew more and more impatient. Why will my son not love you? He complained. The new wife did not know what to do. She longed to have the boy call her mother and love her as she had grown to love him. One day, she decided to seek advice from an old hermit who lived on the top of a mountain. Maybe he can make some kind of potion that will cause my stepson to care for me as he cared for his own mother, she thought. So, harbouring this hope in her heart, the woman climbed the steep mountain to ask the wise hermit for his help. Please, Make me some potion that will cause my stepson to care for me, she begged. Hmm, I could make such a potion, it is true, said the hermit. But I lack a very important ingredient that would go into its making. What is that ingredient? I'll do anything to get it, so the boy will care for me and we can be a happy household, the woman said. What I need is the whisker of a wild tiger. The whisker of a wild tiger? She repeated. However will I get such a thing? You will figure out a way, said the hermit. Now, the woman knew there was a tiger that lived in a cave in the hills above her husband's fields because she had heard its fierce roar from time to time. She puzzled and prayed and puzzled some more as she walked home until at last she came up with a plan. That night she left her house quietly in the deepest darkness and walked to the hills where the tiger lived. She took with her a dish of rice cooked in a little meat broth. Trembling, she tiptoed to the mouth of the tiger's cave where she set the dish down on a flat rock. She backed away slowly, but not so far that the tiger could not see and smell her. She took a deep breath and called to the tiger in a musical voice. At first, he did not come out, but she continued to call to him softly, softly. After a time, he did come out. He sniffed at the rice in the dish, raised his head, and looking straight at her, gave her a terrible growl. She shivered, but did not run away. Then, keeping his suspicious eyes on her, the tiger ate all the rice from the dish and went back into the cave. The woman quickly removed the dish and ran home with it. 
The next night she returned. She put the dish of rice at the mouth of the cave and stepped away again, singing the tiger's name, but this time she did not step as far away as before. Again the tiger appeared, and though he growled as before, he ate the rice more eagerly, seeming not to notice that she stood closer. The next night after that, the woman returned for a third time. This night, the tiger came out of the cave more quickly, as if waiting for her. And this night, the woman stood even a little closer as the tiger ate. And so it went, night after night, after night, until the tiger no longer growled at the woman, and the woman no longer trembled. Finally, one night, the woman did not set the dish on the ground, but she held it in her hand for the tiger to eat out of it. The night after that, she did the same thing, and with her free hand, she scratched the tiger's soft, furry head. The tiger looked up at her with his large golden eyes and stood very still. Gently she spoke to him. Dear tiger, she said, I would like one of your whiskers. The woman reached slowly into her pocket, took out small scissors and very slowly clipped one of the tiger's long whiskers. The tiger gave a low, not unfriendly growl and clawed the ground. Then he shook his head briskly and walked back into his cave. The woman sighed. Oh, thank you, tiger, she said. She ran as fast as she could to the hut of the hermit and she found him stirring something in a pot over a fire. Look, look, she said, I have brought you the whisker of a tiger. Now you can make the potion that will make the boy love me. The wise hermit took the whisker in his fingers and examined it closely. He turned it this way and that. Indeed, he said, it is truly the whisker of a wild tiger. Saying this, he dropped it into the fire where it sizzled and burned to an ash. What have you done? the woman shouted. It took me weeks and weeks to get near enough to the tiger to get that whisker for the potion. Now you have burned it up. You do not need it, said the hermit quietly. Is the boy less responsive than a savage and bloodthirsty tiger? I think not. Go, win over your stepson as you did the tiger with gentleness, persistence and a great deal of patience. And so the woman went back to her house. From that day forward, she cooked meals for her stepson. She cleaned his clothes. She sewed him fine shirts. But no more did she try to press him to sit with her or coax him into talking to her. She countered his angry scowls and sulky moods with love, with kindness, with patience, until at last, after many months had passed, there came a day when the boy felt lonely at bedtime and he called out to her, Please, will you come sit with me? Yes, of course, gladly, the woman said. Shall I tell you a story, my son? The story of a wild tiger who became my friend? Yes, mother, cried the boy. And together they sat, hand in hand, as the words of the story filled their hearts with hope and love and joy. I hope you like this folktale that celebrates the power of love. If so, you might want to look for another similar tale. It's called The Lion's Whiskers and it's a folktale from Ethiopia. And if today's story painted any pictures in your head and heart, do start painting them and send them to us so we can share them with others. Cheerio then.
Join me next time for Journey with Story. <laughs>